Hey, I appreciate you dropping by for my daily devotions. It is November 23rd, 2023. This is Thanksgiving Day in America, and I'm thankful for a lot of things. Most of all, I'm thankful for Christ as my Lord and my Savior, and I'm thankful for heaven. I'm thankful for the body of Christ, the church. I'm thankful for my family with whom I'm going to go eat a turkey later in the day. So that's why my my old, uh, you know, I, I spent 13 years and four months working in auto sales at Sanderson Ford in Glendale, Arizona, and the lot attendants, most of them spoke Spanish. One of them taught me that it, when, it, when it was turkey, he said it, he said that uh, when it was uh, Turkey Day, Thanksgiving, he said, the Dia de la, de la, Oh, I forget how he said it. Yeah. The Dia de Guajalote Grande. That's what he called it. The Day of the Big Turkey. And uh, learned a lot of things. Lo learned to love those guys. Wonderful people. A whole bunch of them, too. It's a big, 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 big place. We're going to look at Romans chapter 9, Mark chapter 10, Psalm 142, and Leviticus chapter 20 today. Yesterday, we read the 8th chapter of Romans. One of the great, 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 great chapters in the Bible. You ever had a hard time? Okay. And a tough times, they come, don't they? I've been around just short of 75 years and I keep running into some tough times. They don't seem to go away. But listen to verse 28 of Romans chapter eight. This is powerful. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him who've been called according to his purpose. He takes great bad and uses it for great good. Some of the toughest times of life produce some of the best things that come along. As long as you let God, get involved. That's what you have to do. You need to let God get involved. And he'll blow your socks off with blessings, okay? Let's take a minute and pray. Father, we're grateful for so many things. Thankful this day uh, for your grace, for your intervention in our life. Most of all, I'm grateful for America. I pray that you would restore the freedoms that are supposed to be in America and put an end to the oppression of, of the left, I have no problem asking you to do that. Pray that you would protect the unborn in this country that wants to kill them. And so I pray for uh, your protection on America, and I, pr I pray that you would enhance the freedoms we're supposed to have and, um, and protect the rest of the world. Father, bring peace to Israel. Bring peace to, you, to Ukraine. Bring peace to hearts with the wonderful grace of Jesus all around the world, I pray. And speak to us today. Make a difference in our lives, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Romans chapter 9. Speak the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. Theirs is the adoption as sons. Theirs the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of, receiving, receiving of the law, the temple worship, and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. Amen. It is not as though God's word had failed, for not all who are descended from Israel are Israel, nor because they are his descendants, are they Abraham's children? On the contrary, it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. In other words, it is not the natural children who are God's children, but it is the children of the promise who are regarded as Abraham's offspring. For this is how the promise was stated. At the appointed time, I will return and Sarah will have a son. Not only that, but Rebekah's children had one and the same father, our father Isaac, Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by works, but by him who calls. She was told the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. What then shall I shall we say? Is God unjust? Not at all. For, as Mo, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on man's desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For the scripture says to for the scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose that I might display my power in you and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore, God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy, and he hardens whom he wants to harden. 
One of you will say to me, then why does God blame us for who resists his will? But who are you, O man, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to him who formed it, why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for noble uses and some for common use? What if God, what if God, choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath, prepared for destruction? What if he did this to make the riches of his glory known to the objects of his mercy, whom he prepared in advance for glory? Even us whom he also called, not only from the Jews, but also from the Gentiles. As he says to Hosea, I will call them my people who are not my people. I will call her my loved one who is not my loved one. And it will happen that in the very place where it was said of them, you are my people, they will be called sons of the living God. And um, that is trying to figure out where that's from, uh, Hosea 2.23 and 1.10. That's where that's from. Okay, you are called sons of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, though the number of the Israelites be like the sand of the sea, only the remnant will be saved. For the Lord will carry out his sentence on earth with speed and finality. It is just as Isaiah said previously, unless the Lord Almighty had left us descendants, we would have been like Sodom and would have been like Gomorrah. What then shall we say? That the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have obtained it, a righteousness that is by faith, but Israel who pursued a law of righteousness has not obtained it. Why not? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as if, as if it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone. People still doing that today, you know, thinking they can work their way to heaven. You can't. All you can do is trust the wonderful grace of Jesus. As it is written, verse 33, See, I lay in Zion a stone that causes men to stumble and a rock that makes them fall, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. Point, trust in Christ. Trust in Christ. Don't think you can work your way into heaven. You can't trust in Christ. And then let's look at Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I'll land on it here in a minute. Mark chapter, there it is, Mark chapter 10. Jesus then left that place and went into the region of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds of people came to him and as was his custom, he taught them. Some Pharisees came and tested him by asking, is it lawful for a man divorce to divorce his wife? Why did Moses, what did Moses command you? He replied, they said Moses permitted a man to write a certificate of divorce and send her away. It was because your hearts were hard that Moses wrote you this law, Jesus replied. But at the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. And when they were, when they were in the house again, the disciples asked Jesus about this. He answered, Anyone who divorces his wife and marries another woman commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another man, he commits adultery. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who, will, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. As Jesus started on, on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. Teacher, he declared, all these I have kept since I was a boy. Jesus took, looked at him and loved him. One thing you lack, said Jesus, go sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven, then come follow me. At this the man's face fell, he went away sad because he had great wealth. 
Jesus looked around and said to, the, to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus said again, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were even more amazed and said to each other, who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Peter said to him, we have left everything to follow you. I tell you the truth, Jesus replied, no one who has left home or brothers or sister or mother or father or children or fields for me and the gospel will fail to receive a hundred times as much in this present age. Homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, fields and fields and with them persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. They were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus leading the way and the disciples were astonished while those who followed were afraid. Again, he took the 12 aside and told them what was going to happen to, to him. We're going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him, flog him and kill him. Three days later, he will rise. When James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him, teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right <coughs> and the other at your left in your glory. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Then they came to Jericho. When they came to Jericho, as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called him. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus, your faith has healed you immediately. He received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. And then Psalm 142. Psalm 142. I cry aloud to the Lord. I lift up my voice to the Lord for mercy. I pour out my complaint before him. Before him, I tell my, my trouble. When my spirit grows faint within me, if you who know my way, it is you who know my way. In the path where I walk, men have hidden a snare for me. Look to my right and see. No one is concerned for me. I have no refuge. No one cares for my life. I cry to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry, for I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who, are, who pursue me, for they are, are too strong for me. Set me free from my prison that I may praise your name. Then the righteous will gather about me because of your goodness to me. A real prayer when David was oppressed. And when you're oppressed, go back to Psalm 142. Spend some time in it. Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. There it is. Lord said to Moses, say to the Israelites, any Israelite or alien living in Israel who gives any of his children to Molech must be put to death. 
what they do, they would offer their child to Molech to be burned in the fire for Molech. I think the closest thing we have going on like that today is abortion. That's just my opinion. The people of the community are to stone him. They will set my, I will set my face against that man and I will cut him off from his people. For by giving his children to Molech, he has defiled my sanctuary and profaned my holy name. If the people of the community close their eyes when the man gives one of his children to Molech and they fail to put him to death, I will set my face against that man and his family and will cut off from their people both him and all who follow in prostituting themselves to Molech. I will set my face against the person who turns to mediums and spiritists to prostitute, prost, prostitute himself by following them, and I will cut him off from the people. Folks, that spiritual stuff on the anti-God side is dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. It still goes on today. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am the Lord your God. Keep my decrees and follow them. I am the Lord who makes you holy. If anyone curses his father or mother, he must be put to death. He has cursed the father or he, he has cursed his father or mother and his blood will be on his own head. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If a man sleeps with his father's wife, he has dishonored his father. Both the man and the woman must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man sleeps with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. What they have done is, is a perversion. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, in other words, homosexuality, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries both a woman and her mother, it is wicked. Both he and they must be burned in the fire so that no wickedness will be among them. If a man has sexual relations with an animal, he must be put to death, and you must kill the animal. If a woman approaches an animal to have sexual relations with it, both the woman and the animal, they must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. If a man marries his sister, the daughter of either his father or his mother, they have, and they have sexual relations, it is a disgrace. They must be cut off before the eyes of the people. He has dishonored his sister, and will be held responsible. If a man lies with a woman during her monthly period and has sexual relations with her, he has exposed the source of the flow and he has uncovered it. Both of them must be cut off from their people. Do not have sexual relations with the sister of either your mother or your father, for that would dishonor a close relative of uh, both of you would be held responsible. If a man sleeps with his aunt, he has dishonored his uncle. They will be held responsible. They will die childless. If a man marries his brother's wife, it is an act of impurity. He has dishonored his brother. They will be childless. Keep all my decrees and laws and follow them so that the land where I am bringing you to live may not vomit you out. You must not live according to the customs of the nations I am to drive out before you because they did these things. I abhorred them. But I said to you, you will possess their land. I will give it to you as an inheritance, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God who has set you apart from the nations. You must therefore make a distinction between clean and unclean animals, between unclean and clean birds. Do not defy yourselves by an animal or bird or anything that moves along the ground, those which I have set apart as unclean for you. You are to be holy to me because I, the Lord, am holy and I have set you apart from the nations to be my own. A man or a woman who is a medium or a spiritist among you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their own heads. Whoa, some pretty straight talk about sin, don't you think? I do. Well, the Lord has spoken. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for Thanksgiving Day. And I pray that... Uh, that we would just hear you speak to us. And I pray that your word would lodge on our heart and that you change us from the inside out to reflect your glory, Lord, and to honor you in our hearts and in our lives. Change us and make us your people your way, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.